Hey everyone, Whip here and welcome on back to Minecraft. Today we are going to be talking about how to plan out a town inside of Minecraft. Previously we've looked into planning villages and planning cities. I think towns are a really cool point in between all of these that we can take a lot of advantage from and make something much more unique than otherwise would be. If y'all are excited for this one, please be sure to hit that like button down below and after the video, if you did enjoy it, consider hitting that subscribe button. But anyways, first and foremost, before we actually get into talking about how we can plan this structure out. I first want to talk about what makes a town different to a village or different to a city like the ones that we previously done. These are my own thoughts, these are my own opinions on it, and these are the things I reference when I'm building inside of Minecraft. Many of you are probably already pulling up your online dictionary, the source, or whatever you want to be using to be like, actually, whip, that's not quite true. But anyways, we're gonna be moving forward with this one. To me personally, I see a town as being about twice the size of a village and maybe somewhere between like a third to about half the size of a city. So it's right smack dab in the middle, that perfect side of it. And on top of that, I also like to have multiple forms of an economy working throughout our town that we're going to be working on. So whether that's, it's at least two forms of an economy, whether you have farming, fishing, trading, some other form of commerce, some mining, logging, whatever it is, you name it, it can be there, it just has to be a large enough scale to fit in with everything else around you. Please note that that does not count the small mom and pop weaver, basket weaver, whatever you want to have, carpenter inside the villages, like those are their own independent thing. Most people in the village are probably doing their own type of thing. In towns, you're probably going to see those just at a much larger scale. Also on top of that, when I personally am thinking about these, there's usually some form of like a ruling party. Whether that's somebody who is the richest individual in the town, they have this giant manor house, or it's some ruler who's there through force and has a fortress or castle or whatever it might be. We have all these different ways of having and signifying a leader. For me, inside of a village, we typically inside of villages are going to see like a tribal form of leadership where there's going to be multiple people, like a group of elders or something that might be leading on top of that village. And then outside of that one, the final thing that I usually go for is another way of signifying these are a bit different is having another form of defense or having a form of defense in general. Villages typically in Minecraft, they don't spawn with any form of a wall. I know that we can like people inside of Minecraft when they're playing that game, they are consistently building walls to keep the zombies and now the pillagers out of there just to keep your villagers safe because otherwise they die very, very easily. But traditionally, the villages don't quite spawn with walls. So in that case, I'm going to say a village typically does not have walls involved with it. Or it might have some form of a wooden palisade wall that's just short and just gets the job done. And then inside of the towns, that's, I think, where we start to introduce the major forms of defense. Whether it's a big town wall that goes around the entire thing with multiple gatehouses, guard towers, whatever it is, you might name it. And then we also have some just more structure to the town itself instead of just loose buildings all over the place i think it's important to have all of the structure inside of there but anyways that's my whole reasoning behind all the differences that i like to see inside of these let's get in how we're going to plan this one out and how we're going to make this town unique Moving forward with a lot of what we were talking about there, we are first and foremost going to be clearing a large portion of this forest so that we actually have somewhere to build a town. Probably sounds pretty good, so you could think that if you're playing this in survival, you could chop all those trees down, and that's going to give you a great amount of resources that you could use to build your town. It's a great reason, and it gave us an awesome little landscape area out here. I wanted to first and foremost do a tiny bit of terraforming by adding in a few stone cliffs and by plotting out our general roadways. I figured that little island we had there was a great spot for a lighthouse of sorts, so I'm throwing a campfire down there. Then we're using a yellow concrete in here to symbolize where a lot of our general roadways are gonna be going. This gives me personally a great outline of where things have been going and just kind of have a general idea of where I'm gonna fill in a lot of our buildings and our structures. Then the brown concrete is being used to plan out a lot of dock spaces. As we are here on the edge of an ocean, which actually has an amazing coral reef in it, this is an awesome seed that I found. If anybody want, wants it, uh, let me know. I can, I'd can. i be happy to share it with you all. But anyways, we're coming down here, adding in a wall along the bottom using our gray concrete and just adding in a few towers along that ravine. I wanted to use the Minecraft aspect of this and actually keep the ravine in as a form of defense. Then coming over here, we are actually going to be planning out a small fortress, a mini castle of sorts, somewhere for the ruling party to actually live and govern over everybody and also a form of defense if anybody is attacking from the sea. 
it gives a great way for us to defend from multiple ways and gives a kind of looming presence over the town in a great way to view out over the water so they can know if things are coming to them here. So that's just kind of the general design of that castle that we have. It's rather small as you can see. So I wanna make sure a lot of the buildings that we are making are in proportional size to the castle. The castle itself would probably be much, much larger than most things that we're fitting inside of here. So it probably makes sense to build some smaller houses because we would want to have a lot of the construction efforts focused on the castle itself. Then coming throughout here, you can see me doing a little bit more terraforming, adding in some cliffs, and I think it just adds some personal uniqueness to the area and limits the ability for where roads can go through. And then we just cram a bunch more houses into here to get ourselves started. Hi there, quick interlude here, right at smack dab in the middle of the video. If you're enjoying it, please be sure to hit that like button down below and if you are brand new and are still sticking around at this point why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button thanks so much let's jump back to it as we have a large portion of these ones already built out i thought it'd be useful to bring in another color so that we could see the different areas of the village so since we're more up on the hill here and i decided to bring in some red concrete to contrast against our light blue concrete so it just didn't become a sea of light blue and be harder to tell the actual details of things and I think just having multiple ideas when you're planning throughout here gives a good point of reference for everything that you might be doing. And what we're doing here is we're actually creating a small square area, technically a square, uh, where they could meet. There could be some market stalls symbolized by these uh, yellow ones, I was about to say, green. And just different areas for the, the townsfolk to actually come through here and meet up and talk about their day, go through all those things. There might be some weird golden bell that attracts them into the middle of that. Who knows? Minecraft does some weird things. And then coming down the hill, I wanted to start adding in a few more structures, jumping back over into our blue here so it doesn't get too crazy. But I figured as you're leading up towards that castle, these red ones might also be a little bit more on the wealthy side since they're right next to the castle. That's probably where the more rich merchants or the more royal folk, now I don't wanna say royal because we're in a town here, it's not really a palace or anything like that, but somebody where who has a higher level of status would be living there. So adding in a bunch more of these blue ones, dotting in some near these larger docks that we have, maybe some warehouse structures, some areas that might have some towers, be able to view out further, and just completely filling this entire area with housing. The road plan that we built to begin with really helps with structuring the way a lot of these structures are going to be added in here, structuring the structures. I know it sounds great. Uh, and it's just a good way of thinking about this general project and adding a lot more uniqueness to it because it really helps us break away from creating a plus sign shaped build of sorts or whatever it else might be. We need to have a lot of time spent in actually figuring out the base plan of where things are gonna be going Otherwise, you can get up with some pretty boring or weird looking builds. So I like to do all these kind of spider webby networks of roadways and just fill in the buildings as I can go in between them. And then in between a lot of the buildings, you'll see me adding in tiny alleyways or just areas for them to meet like we've done before. And I thought this island that we had on this side probably wasn't protected enough to be it's a bunch of dock areas. So I decided to just add a few houses out there and one or two single docks, which are hidden behind that great tree right there. And then coming through and adding in our final houses along this area, starting to bring in quite a few different areas for our market stalls and just adding some more interest throughout this. And you can see the plan from the top actually looks pretty cool at this point, just from the general layout that we have here. It feels very organic. It feels like there's a lot of things that we can move forward with it. We have the multiple forms of economy right now. We've actually only built one of them that we're going to be getting to the second one. The first one being all this fishing and everything that with all these dock areas, I guess that could also be some trading as well. So that could be our two forms of economy there. We have just a very giant seafaring civilization inside of this town, which I think is a very cool way to go. But on top of this one, I wanted to be adding in a farming area as we're just doing a looming off into the distance here. I just love the ocean that we're bordering with this one. There's a coral reef that you can see just coming right here off of the corner of the screen. I think it was just too perfect to not do this. But as we're setting ourselves down here, you can see the town probably needs to be built up from this point which would really help with actually making it look more like a town. But today was all about planning. The last thing I wanna be checking on here is bringing in that next form of like economy or where people could be working is I wanna bring in some farmland out the front. It's a great way to just add in some really simple stuff, adds in some detail and gives you a way to detail your roadway, leaving the whatever side of the city you might have. So I'm just adding in a bunch of wheat fields here, just quickly flying around, doing some world edit, letting it all grow up and adding in some bushes. And I think it looks really, really cool. As you can see, 
see it's all coming together here now, so that's pretty awesome. Hey everybody, thank you so very much for watching today's episode. I hope you all did enjoy. Please be sure to hit that like button if you did. If you all would like a world download to build this yourself and see what you can do with it, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I'm still a little hesitant on the whole world download thing, seeing as what has happened in the past, but if there's a lot of you that want to get your hands on the world download here, I would be more than happy to provide that for you. I'm going to buzz off with the rest of these bees, so I will catch you on the flip side. Yes, I made a terrible bee pun.